All right, guys, so let's talk about some resume basics that we have going on um, here. Okay. So, first of all, um, I'm going to be gone on Friday. Your resume is due on Friday. You still will have a vocab test on Friday. Okay, so lots going on on Friday, so we need to keep on busting through here. So, I know some of you have created resumes in other classes, and it's fine to pull those up and just start with those and tweak them to meet the criteria that I set forth for you. There is no reason to start completely over. Okay? Yes? What if they're in Word? Well, if they're in Word, you can still uh, save them into Docs, but you're going to have some formatting issues that you're going to have to go back and fix. Copy, paste, bro. And you can do that. But like I said, there will be some format issues. But that's... I mean, I'm giving you a couple of days here to work on them in class, so those formatting issues can be fixed. Well, you're going to have to go on this desktop, and you're going to have to open your Word, and then you're going to have to open your Drive, and then copy and paste from the Word document into a Docs. And then it'll be there forever. Okay. So... Well, they, these are the rules that we're sticking with on this one, okay? Mm -hmm. One page in length is recommended, and that's pretty much recommended for uh, across the board. Every now and then people are like, oh, you can have two. But remember, folks, if you're mailing this in for a real live job, you're going to have a cover letter that goes with it. So a cover letter a co has some information about you. Your resume has other information, okay? So we are going to stick to one page max. For some of you, that's going to be difficult because you are uh, so involved. You've had a lot of jobs. You do a lot of volunteerism. You have a lot of work experience. You participate in a lot of clubs and activities, whatever the case may be. For others of you, this is going to be difficult because you don't do a whole lot. Okay. And when that is the case, then we have to be creative and come up with things that you actually have done. With that, talk about your value as an employee, a value as a student, your worthiness to be a scholarship recipient. Okay? All of these things, um, your this resume you're getting ready to create, it's going to be very useful. You're going to need it a lot this year. Okay? And I mean a lot. So I want you to uh, take it quite seriously here. Yeah, blow this up a little bit, even though you have it on your screen. So one inch margins is pretty much recommended all the way around. So, and that is the standard, like that's on your, um, that's your default in your docs, okay? But if you need some room because you're like, oh my heavens, I'm on page two you could shrink the margins down a little. Okay, that is one place that you can save. 10 to 12 point font. Nothing smaller than 10. 10 point font is going to be, if uh, again, you're one of those people that is super involved and you need to have smaller font to fit it all on one page. 12 point font is the exact opposite if you're trying to fill up space. Or it might just be perfectly what you have done and what you want to feature fills up the entire spot page at 12 point on. And that's fine. Absolutely nothing smaller than 10 and nothing larger than 12. Smaller than 10 is too small to read. Larger than 12, it looks like you are attempting to fill up a page. Okay? Also looking for a reason, easy to read font, uh, you know, Times New Roman, of course, is very common. What's the other one that, Arial. I mean, something that is very clear. Um, alignment. So one of the most important things on a resume is the way that it looks. I know that kind of sounds silly, but you want it to be, um, you want alignment to be spot on. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I pull up some examples. 
and you want it to be clear, clear and crisp. You want them, the potential employer or scholarship committee or admissions office to be able to easily locate the information that they are looking for. You're not writing in paragraphs. These are phrases. Okay, just little phrases that is easily identifiable because we're going to have everything aligned really well. We're going to have things bulleted. We're going to have headings that say, what is this section? And it's going to be quite simple. Okay. And consistency. Again, you want this, you, you are presenting yourself here. Okay. And part of it isn't just what you're writing down. It's how you're presenting it. You want it to be neat, consistent. Um, good looking, you know, appealing. You don't want it to be empty, scatterbrained, inconsistent. Okay. So we've got going to, I'm going to be pretty hard on you about the way it looks and alignment. Okay. If you are really mailing it in for real to go someplace, I would highly recommend going somewhere and getting some resume paper, that heavier weight paper and, um, an envelope, a matching envelope. That's not necessary for this class, but for real, you should. Okay, so when we are ordering our items, you're gonna order from most important or relevant to least. And what I mean by that is if um, you are applying to medical school, and you have had three jobs. You have worked at the local gas station. You have worked at McDonald's. And you have also worked as a, as just a little errand girl and stuff in Doc's office in Lewistown. That one is going to be listed first under experience. It is the most relevant to what it is you're attempting to do with your life. Okay? Relevance comes first. So we have our identifying information. And by this, I mean, who is this? Who is writing me this? Kim College for this example. But So it is important to provide all of this information for a scholarship or to a prospective employer. Okay. They need to know how to get a hold of you. And it should always be at the top. The first thing they see, some people um, like to center their name and then have address and all that other stuff directly underneath it that goes across the whole page. Fine. Some people like it um, like this way as here, you see here. And that's fine too, but I would center it. Okay. Front and center. Easy to see. Name. Phone number. Address. And I will tell you. Yeah. I will tell you. Make sure Gwyneth is there. Uh, she's out in the greenhouse and I know sometimes the speaker out there doesn't work. Thanks. Um, I'm supposed to go see the At 10 o'clock. That's where you need to go. Yes, it is. For MACC dual credit. Yeah. I'll come bother you six that over if I don't make it back to this Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And this is posted in the classroom. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So I do want to say this. And um, email is becoming more and more and more common for people to contact people. Gwen has found out through email that she's been accepted to two colleges that she's applied to already. You know, when I found out, I got a letter in the mail. Okay? So people use email. I'm going to suggest to you that if you don't check your email frequently, don't put an email address down. Okay? Because you do need to check it frequently. 
and this year it is okay for you to put your school email address down. But remember, your Gmail account with Highland will be canceled when you graduate. In May, might be the beginning of June, but I mean, you, you get the point. So, if you choose to use that email address, know that you're going to have to change it at the end of the year. If you already have a personal email and you check it frequently, I would probably put that one down. I really would. If you don't, you just have to go and create one. Go to Gmail, create one, easy. Go to uh, uh, Yahoo and you know some of the more common ones. You can get a free, free email account set up. I have three. I don't know why I need three, but I do. So the very first thing that we're going to have at the top of our resume is our objective. And objective is what it is you are looking uh, to get. Why are you sending these people your resume? Okay. So they want to see it's a guiding statement that helps direct the resume to the appropriate person so if i decided yeah i'm done with island peace and i wanted to work somewhere else right um this first example of an objective would be something that i would put on my resume a teaching position in the english language arts content area at the secondary level what do i want I want a job teaching English to high schoolers. That's what the purpose of an objective statement is for you guys. Now, if you're sending this in for a scholarship to obtain scholarship money to help fund the many fees associated with college. Okay. If you are looking to send this in for admissions uh, to gain admissions into the University of Missouri, Columbia, so I can further my educational career. Why are you sending this in? Okay. Questions? The next thing we are going to have is education. So since you're still in high school, the information should go directly after the objective. Okay. And since you, now, I don't care if you've been to three high schools, you put the one where you're going to receive your diploma from. Highland High School. Okay. So this is what it should look like right now. Highland High School, comma, Ewing, Missouri. Expect, expected graduation date, May 2021. Okay. Now, after you have graduated, take off the expected. You graduated. You're done. Okay. If your GPA is low, then don't put it on there. But it is an opportunity for you to put your GPA. Um, we always put on a four scale because some schools are actually on a five scale. And a 3.75 on a four scale looks far better than a 3.75 on a five scale. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? When you're applying for anything other than scholarships, I would just take the GPA off because it doesn't really matter. And most of the spots on the scholarship, uh, the application forms, it's going to be a spot for Mrs. Adam to actually fill out your GPA. So if you want to leave it off, you can leave it off. This is also the opportunity that if you're taking any dual credit classes, that's where you put this. If you have any certification, if you are a certified lifeguard, if you are go to Votech or have been to Votech and you have received some sort of welding certification or something like that, put it down. If you are CPR certified and you're looking to go into the medical field or anything that is relevant, people, that shows you have taken um, an active role in doing something that you're interested in already. CPR certified, is it difficult? No, but is it time consuming? Yeah but you still made the effort to do it. Even though you had all these other things going on, it shows a lot about you. And remember, that's the purpose of a resume. Sometimes it's hard to talk about ourselves 
and be like, hey, um, this is why I'm neat. And this is why you should consider me for this scholarship, or this is why you should consider me for admissions into college. But you can't be because you are neat. And you got a lot of really cool things about you. And this is the only way they're going to find out about it, guys. Okay? You just got to you just got to send it, man. Just send it. Okay, so our experience. Now, this is can be employment, this can be internships, this can be volunteering. Depending on what it is, is how you should label this section. If it is, um, which is business, which is similar to finance. Oh, they tell me what they're about. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so if it is, um, you were paid for it, then I would put work experience. Okay. If it was volunteer, then I would put volunteer experience. So what you do here is you include your title or position. Um, secretary, the period of time that you work, August 2017 to current. Current means I'm still working. I'm still doing this job. Okay. And the place of employment, MB Construction, Monticello, Missouri. Underneath that, you have boards. And this is where you see your duties while you were working. Okay. It's very important, folks. This is not sentences. These are statements. Okay, and they are in bulleted format and they are brief. The first word of every bullet is a verb. It is an action word because remember, these bullets are telling everybody else what we did when we were there. These should be power verbs and don't use the same one after, again and again and again. You have a vocabulary. If your vocabulary isn't very strong, then Google a synonym for prepared if you want to use it more than once. Okay. Now I'm going to bring you down here and we're actually going to talk about this exact thing here, right here is an example. Okay. English. So remember what it is. What job did I hold? English language arts instructor from when 2006 to current that dates wrong. Where? Lewis County C1 School District, Ewing, Missouri. Okay. See how it's formatted right here? Right here. Now, if I wanted to, I could bold English language arts instructor. If I bolded that and then I had another work experience I wanted to list, I would bold that title, that job title as well consistency remember we want it to be consistent okay now look power verbs developed implemented established coordinated created okay all right the only thing I would like to say, it's kind of a new thing and I haven't fixed it on here, but a lot of people say, if you are still current, like if you are still reading or still working at this particular job, current, current, then instead of your power verbs being past tense, developed, implemented, established, coordinated, and created, they should be present tense because you're still doing them. So developing, implementing, establishing, coordinating, and creating. Okay. Do you see that? The next section is going to be our honors and activities. So some people can combine these, these sections. 
some people um, have enough space on their resumes to have two. So you can have activities. So what are some activities that would be put on here? Clubs, sports. Correct. Clubs, sports. Extracurricular. Extracurricular. What do you do outside of the classroom? <coughs> You also list how long have you been doing it? You know, all four years, nine through 12. Okay. Also important, um, let's say you decided to be um, the student council president this year and you were elected president. You would write student council, nine through 12, vice president, 12. Okay. Indicate that you actually have also held leadership positions. You're not just willing to be in a club, but you also are, are willing to be a leader in that club. So I think we've got that done. But now, what about uh, uh, honors? What are honors? Okay, so maybe we have received the perfect attendance. Maybe you have received the high honor roll. You know, Mrs. Adam has been calling out students all week for their honor roll achievements. Um, maybe you have um, been student of the month, or student of the year. Maybe you have been the captain of the cheerleading squad or been most improved on the football team. Those are all awards. They show character. They show value, okay? If you were selected to Missouri Girl State, that's an award. Okay? All of which is important and you need to put it on here. Remember, this is you on a sheet of paper. So our references. So I expect you, and I think I told you yes, that I wanted you all to have three references. No? So, I want everyone to have three references. Now, not three letters of recommendation. Just three people that are willing to say, oops, that are willing to say, yes, I will write a letter of recommendation for you. Yes. So, you need to go up to three people and you need to say, um, would you mind if I use you as a reference on my resume? I'm going to be sending these in to colleges and for some... Um, scholarships. Okay. You need their permission for two, re well, one main reason. Number one, um, what if they don't feel like they can provide a good reference for you? You need to know that up front. The other thing, of course, would be you have to give them notice. I had somebody call once for a reference for one of my old students, and I was did not know that that person has put me down as a reference. I had no idea. And so when I got the phone call, I mean, the girl was a good girl. I liked her a lot and I did the best I could on providing a solid recommendation, but it was like, uh, I felt like I was flying by the seat of my pants. You know, I was completely taken off guard because I, I mean, had she at least messaged me and said, Hey, can I use you as a reference in my mind? I would have already been formulating. Okay. I had this kid two years ago. What were some of her super fantastic qualities? What did I really like about her? What did she do super well? But because she didn't give me that heads up, I didn't have that opportunity to reflect. So I was just kind of, you know, I mean, I did, like I said, I did the best I could, but it wasn't nearly as personable or uh, positive as it could have been. Because I just was caught off guard. So you need to find three people that are willing to say yes. And then at the bottom, um, at the bottom of your page, you're not going to write this. I don't want you to write this anymore. I don't know if I can. What you're actually going to put is um, put something like that. Um, at the very bottom, because page two, you're going to have your references, okay? This is how you need 
your um, reference information to look like, the name, who they are, uh, teacher, counselor, uh, if they are your boss, Attention where. Students. Would all MACC students go to Mrs. Adams' office at this time? And again, their phone number and their email address. How can these people get a hold of your references if they need to? Okay. Are there any questions for me? So let's take a look at some of the samples here. Posting, taking a minute. Let's open this one first. Oh my. Um, I'm going to attempt to open it again. So we can have it over here too. Great. So you can see here, let me blow this up a little bit. This individual has a current address and a permanent address. What do you think that is? Right, like current, I'm in college. But I'm looking for a summer job, so my permanent address is mom and dad's house, and I'll be home in May. But now for you guys, you don't have that. You're going to have one address, and it's going to be where you're currently living right now. Okay? A phone number and an email address if you check your email frequently. And you're going to want it under your name. One address. Okay, now what I really want you to notice here, folks, the alignment I was talking about, okay? Look. All very perfectly aligned, very neat, clean, and crisp, okay? Easy to find whatever it is you're looking for because this has uh, headers, section titles. We, here's our objective, here's our education, experience, uh, tutoring experience and activities. Okay, again, notice the consistency, bolded and in all caps. I don't care how you do it, but be consistent. If you want it to be bold, that's fine. Make it bold, make them all bold though. Okay, if you want them to be in all caps like this, no problem but put all caps for all of them. Consistency is key to making this visually appealing. And that's important, guys, believe it or not. If your resume is sitting on a desk for a scholarship and they are trying to decide between you or uh, Susie and your resume is not as attractive as Susie's, and all other things are created equal between you two, like if you guys have the same GPA and the same ACT and you're both pretty much involved, make no mistake, there has to be a reason why they choose somebody. Sometimes it does come down to, well, looks like she put forth more time on her resume, so I guess we'll choose, let's just go with her. Okay, that does happen. So, um, you need to spend some time on this and really work on its visual attractiveness, okay, and consistency. Going through here, you can see I'm going to blow this up again so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, they also used, um, remember, this is what you were. This person was a student teacher, 
and then this uh, here, and then here. But see how they have it um, in bolded all three places. Consistency, consistency, consistency. Where this job took place, they've decided we're not going to bold it, but it's going to be in all capital letters right here. Okay, and then again here, and then again here, here, and here. Very important. All right, again, consistency. Nice, aligned, looking really good. Power, we've got some power verbs here. Coordinated, worked, taught, developed, attended, instructed. Good. Are there any questions about this so far? So here's another one I'm going to pull up for you, just so you can see that there are a few differences. But not a whole lot. So um, references available upon request is what this one says. I would really like you, for you to put that they are attached because you are going to go ahead and create one today. Okay. Again, we've got, for the most part, power verbs. Um, we have great alignment here. You can see uh, easily identifiable sections of the resume. So whoever's looking at it can quickly locate the information they are looking for. We have a nice, clear objective at the top. What am I looking for? I'm looking for an entry-level position in the field of marketing or sales. Very clear. Okay. Are there any questions about this? One last thing here I want to post and I want to talk about is, of course, your... Okay, so at the top of your reference sheet, you are going to write references, but please notice Chris M. College also chose to put his name there. Why do you think it is very, very, very important for you to put your name on this page? Yeah, I mean, what if this page gets sued? put your name on your reference sheet. You just absolutely have to put your name. They have to know whom this belongs to. Okay. Please notice we have the name and then what they do, where they work, right? Director of Human Resources, the address of their job, the phone number that you could, you know, contact Alan at and an email address for Alan. Okay. Extremely important. Three times. Three references. And that's what you need. Are there any questions for me? All right. We'll get working on it. Get started. We have, I don't know, four or five minutes left in class. Pull your old one up if you have it. And let's start uh, tweaking it to meet some of the new guidelines.